Well, folks, in case you haven't guessed, of course, this right here is the Pasco River Crossing on the Frenchman's Track, Cape York. Having a ball, mate? Absolutely, mate. I, I love this. This is an adventure, and this, uh, this trip's all about, I yep. suppose. We're yep. doing, this, doing the Frenchman's Track. We're doing crazy river crossings. There's crocodiles, there's great campsites, and there's bits of the Cape you've never, never seen, seen before. But well, we didn't start here, we didn't start in the middle of a river. No. We started way back up there with a couple of recoveries. Uh, some mud, a lot of mud actually, some river crossings. So to find out how we started, sit down, grab something cold, crack it open, because you'll need to do that, and enjoy, four-wheel drive action style. Now, what do you reckon you and I get in those things? And What's go wrong, mate? Water's a bit cold, is it? No, mate, that's how it always is. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the start and we're full of supplies and excitement, making our way to the Frenchman's Track. Here we go boys, the start of the Frenchman's Track. I'm pretty excited, I haven't done this one before. Well, you've done it, haven't you, Graham? Oui, oui. Did you get that? That was French for yes, yes, I have. Ah, you yeah, boy. Yeah! <laughs> uh, it's a good little track. It's, uh, it's not a very long track, but it's got a couple of big obstacles in it um, and a very big river crossing in the Pasco. That's a, uh, well, we'll suck it and see when we get there. There you are, I've been quite excited about this one. I've been looking forward to it for a couple of months. Yeah, Rocky, you're towing a trailer on this one, mate. How's that going for you? The trailer itself actually tows like a dream, mate. You don't even know it's actually there, but nah, this will be a, certainly a big challenge for the old trailer and the car as well. Hey, Andrew, this is your first time with the Frenchman's as well, mate. Absolutely, my first time up here at all. So uh, everything's new for me. I'm looking forward to it, fellas. Let's um, get into it, eh? The Frenchman starts just off the PDR and makes its way east towards the Pasco. After this, we're going to follow up with a trip out to Cape Flattery and finally hit the coast. An epic few days planned in an epic location. I'll tell you what, this is going to be good. The Frenchman's one of those real iconic tracks in Cape York. I've never actually driven it and I'm pretty excited to do so. Just up ahead you can see the track, it's all washed out. I reckon that's due to the wet season. It's actually quite washed out. There's big ruts and all sorts of stuff through here. One of the big things I'm looking forward to is the Pasco crossing. A lot of people talk about that one as being an absolute doozy. A lot of people turn back when they get to that because it's usually deep and fast flowing. Wheel lifts and all sorts of things. We're just on the access track. We're about 200 metres into the Frenchman. How good is this? Cape York. It's not on your bucket list. Stop what you're doing right now and start planning your trip to the Cape. Ah, it's pretty easy. It's good that we're all well equipped to battle our way down this track, but it's not just about vehicles. It's also about mindset, mateship Whoa. and experience, especially when it comes to these sort of environments. Come on Black Series, you can do it. I'll tell you what, this Black Series is an absolute little ripper of a trail. So easy to tow and so light as well. Makes my job a hell of a lot easier. wet seasons up here can come through and change a track from one year to another and you have to be prepared for what gets thrown at you. I absolutely love this style of driving, it's just so much fun. It's pedal to the floor and try and hold on. We've got a long way to go so it's time to cover some ground. It looks as if there's a lot of water still hanging around. We can't hold back now. Yeah, it's a little bit deeper than I thought, to be honest. Jeepers. Good Lord, I, I was submerged. <laughs> it was like a submarine. Woohoo! I have a bonnet, that's good. Oh, be bonnet washed. But just up ahead, we've got a massive body of water to get through. We need to take a closer look, and that means on foot. Oh, that's <laughs> someone's bash plate. Someone's bash plate. <laughs> Tells a bit of a story. When you lose your bash plate in a bog hole, something's gone wrong. Something's gone terribly wrong. They could use it as a barbecue plate. Sit there for now. Just thought I'd do a bit of pre-preparation as a fair old boggy section down there. I walked down in through there, it was disgusting. It was um, very sloppy. So, just want to get the winch rope ready. So if I do go down, I'm going to be quite quick on the end of the winch and um, it'll avoid flooding the vehicle. That's the plan. That's the plan. Well, have a look at this one here. There's no alternatives but to get through this bog hole. It just keeps going as far as the eye can see down there. I think Sean's got the power, the 35s, and the aggressive mindset <laughs> to power him through this. I don't think he's going to have an issue, but I'm eager to see just how it goes. We'll see how he's looking. Hey, look at down there, mate. 
Yeah, good mate. I've just um, turned both lockers on. I've pretty much switched everything on and um, I'm ready to go. I reckon you should have both windows down, mate. No, I was thinking that, mate. We could take a, a leaf out of your book, I suppose, but no, I'm going to put them all up. All right, mate. Good luck. And I'm into it. What I'm trying to do here is ease into the bog hole and then power out. That way, I don't hit the water at speed and then risk any damage to my radiator. Oh, that's boggy. Oh, I just made that through. That was a lot of limiter bashing going on there. Holy heck. <laughs> I didn't know I could do 8,000 RPM in the old girl, mate. Wait, where was the boggy? The first bit or the second bit? I don't know. They're both pretty boggy. The second bit, I sort of came sideways out of the puddle a little bit and then that straightened up so I lost a bit of momentum so I got a little bit um, bogged in the second one but kept pounding through. Right, I come and uh, be ready to help out. Yeah, copy mate. Now it's time for Graham in the D-Max. Yep. I'll tell you what, he hits it hard. He certainly doesn't want to get stuck. One of the big advantages of the D-Max is the fact that it's nice and light so that should help him get across. 4,000 RPM of goodness. Yes! Through you go. <laughs> Yahoo! That was good fun. Mud, the best fun you can have with your clothes on. Just, uh, there was not much that was me then, to be honest with you. I just, uh, second gear low, put my foot down, <laughs> just let the D-Max do all the work. <laughs> what can I say? All right, Andrew, you're up, buddy. Wow, I'll tell you what, he's looking good at the start. He's got heaps of momentum. However, it's that old third vehicle rule, and he's gone down in the mud that we've stirred up before him. Oh, reverse. That wasn't good. <laughs> We're straight into it to help Andrew out with a recovery. We don't want him sat here too long in this silty water. I've got nothing. But it looks like he's got other problems. It's blowing a fuse or something. That's not good, mate. No, mate, that's real bad news, that is. That winch has just let go on the first crossing of the day, so. I'm going to reverse back, snatch him out, I reckon. Yeah, snatch him out. All right, okay. We might have to fix this one when we get back to camp. It won't be anything too major, I don't reckon. Just snatch strap, I reckon, get him out, and um, figure this one out, back at camp. Yep, it's a D-Max to the rescue. Sorry, Rocket. Mate, it's not that dirty or smelly. A snatch recovery is a good recovery technique, especially when you want to get someone out of a bog hole really quick. Right, bud, let's give this a go, see how we go. Good to go. Woohoo! That was a fair old hit. Okay, so Rocket's seen three trucks go through now. He knows exactly what to do. He's got plenty of power, 35. He's got the trailer on the back, but as he's been saying this whole trip, he doesn't even know it's there. The only issue I think he's going to have is in here, but you watch how much he's going to give it from there to there. Yeah. I don't even know if he's going to stop before he hits Andrew's truck. No, so. He's going to give it a red hot go. Let's call him through, eh? Tell you what, Rocket has definitely got his game face on, and so he should. He's got to get through with a trailer on the back. He's got to have his work cut out for him, that's for sure. Here we go, I think he's got it. Oh, wait a sec. I'm stuck. Just a little bit stuck. What happened there? You just reckon Andrew dug it up for you, mate? No, there's a big rut. The safe bet was to go yeah, in the deep part. I feel like I dodged a bullet there. I made it across when the bigger trucks didn't. I don't know what, what went right there. I'm going to take it. It was me. Sometimes it's just the pilot that gets the vehicle through. Well, boys, we haven't even got to the first uh, river crossing and it's proven to be pretty tough already. Mate, I'd totally forgotten about those boggy patches, but uh, they brought back memories. I've got to say, I didn't think um, I was going to get through some of those. And um, Rocket, you did pretty good with that trailer, mate. Yeah, she's been a bit challenging, but I tell you what, she's dragging along nicely, this Black Series. I'm actually quite proud of the Elga. VMS says the Wentlock is literally only a few hundred metres away, so um, that'll be a next challenge, I reckon. I look forward to seeing it. I remember it being a bit of a doozy. Yeah, actually, this might be it right about here. Well, boys, this is the mighty Wentlock. This is one of two big river crossings on oh, the Frenchman. This and the Pasco yeah. down the end. But this bit here is actually about as easy as it gets for river crossings. This is not the problem. Problem's up here. 
When you get one look at the terrain around here, it's pretty easy to tell this is Cape York. Well, there is actually a couple of different lines here, and dare I say it, none of them are fantastic. Um, so, Sean knows the guinea pig. I, I think intentions are one thing, but as it, when I get down oh, here, no. things oh, are just going to start sliding. Yeah. We'll see yeah. what happens. Just getting off that Common into there. Out the window. Oh, right. All right, let's do it. Here we go. It feels a lot steeper than it probably really is. This descent down into the Wentlock is super off cam, but it's also really clay, which is going to mean traction is going to be hard to find. My car's just become a lot wider. I can't see a thing. Literally got the 79 in the hands of the other boys. I reckon you can make all the plans you want about how you're going to drive down here, but I reckon it's going to decide for you. That's insane. I, I didn't expect that. Hang on, don't kill Rocket. We need him. Perfect, that was all right. Yeah, was really well guided, boys. A lot of mud, that's slippery. I'd like to say there's technique in that, but re the reality is you've just got to inch your way down and try not to go like a bull at a gate so that when you do touch something, it's only smooth. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to come in from here in the rut um, and let gravity do the work. Okay, first gear, low range. I'm just going to crawl my way down, I think. Jeez, that was a bit rough. Graham's approach is quite simple. He's going to start off in the rut so he doesn't slide. And look at that, he makes it look super easy. You! Oh, that was a sensational drive by Graham. He just really followed those ruts. He couldn't go anywhere, that's the other good thing about it. And being an IFS vehicle, didn't get hung up. He gave it momentum in the right spots, made it look easy. It's Andrew's turn now. Now he's seen exactly what Graham's done, so he should make this look easy too. Flex weapon. You can breathe now. Breathe, breathe. Lucky being last, you guys have been scalloping that out beautifully for me, so I should, be, I should clear it all the way down. It's got a 79 bar, perfectly in it. Now finally Rocket's up next. Now he's got the big 79 combined with a big canopy and also towing a trailer. So there's a lot more to think about when tackling this line. Oh, it just sounds like an angry beast. <laughs> the death squeals. Imagine that just let go. Rocket really needs to pay attention exactly what the trailer's doing as well as the 79. It's two things to think about in a really technical part of the track. Listen to that thing. Well, that was significantly easier than I thought it would be. Where was yeah. that? Did you even notice yeah. there was a hill? Yeah. Did it really easy. Cool. I'll tell you what, the truck and the trailer makes a bloody beautiful pair. Yeah. Now we're at the edge of the Wentlock. It's time to make our way across. We realise it's not that deep. The thing we do have to be mindful about is a soft sand at the bottom. Having made it through the went lock and up the other side without a drama, we're faced with more water crossings on the track. I find that on the 79, second gear low range really is a sweet spot. It gives me power on demand should I need to jump on the right foot. <laughs> this thing's got so much power. Oh, you gotta love it. <laughs> Just so fun to drive. I'll tell you what, Graham's not hanging around. He's straight into that. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> Drive it like you stole it. That's one way to say it. Holy heck. I'm surprised there's any water left in there. And Andrew's straight into it. He goes really well at the start with heaps of momentum, and then all of a sudden, he comes to a complete stop. What's going on, man? But we're quickly out with the snatch trap to get him out nice and fast. Uh -huh. Andrew's out, but we've discovered an issue. If I pull the updater out, I can actually fix it. Myself. Well, we've uh, all opened the bonnet and looked inside. That's never a good sign. Now we think that Andrew's done an alternator and we've confirmed that because Rocket's done. How many have you done? About five, yeah. He's done about five, <laughs> so he knows exactly what he's talking about. We reckon we can get this one serviceable in camp. We'll take the wheel off and get into the side of it, hit it with a bit of CRC, play with it and see if we can't get it going again. But 
Don't turn her off and we'll get the camp. Well, that's going to be one of the biggest splashes I've ever seen. I'll tell you what, I don't blame Rocket for not wanting to hang around. He knows he's got to give it everything. If that's not the face of determination, I don't know what is. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> that was insane. Hey, you're a legend. Oh, I actually, I honestly thought I was stopping them, but she kept on scrabbling then. There was shivering, there was all sorts of awful noises going on. But I went in there with a bit of, I think oh, I need man. to see some anger management. <laughs> Mumbo. <laughs> Crazy. That was brilliant. All right. That was brilliant. Big go. Well, blokes, this track keeps on giving, and I reckon I've got about 30 minutes of light left if we're lucky, and um, I don't even know if we're going to get to the Pasco before it gets dark. Mate, I don't think we will. If you look at where we crossed the Wentlock and where we are now in the old VMS there, I would say we probably won't make it. Um, I reckon we keep an eye out for a camp, eh? Yeah, it sounds like a plan, mate. Hey, Rocket, you find that the auto's helping you tow that trailer? You keep mentioning how easy it is to tow, but do you think it's got a lot to do with the fact that you're actually running an auto in the big 79? Well, the auto's actually going really, really good. When towing, the auto, if anything else, especially over this really rough stuff, talking about it acts as a giant shock absorber, so she's, you know, absorbing all the impacts and everything, so it makes my life a hell of a lot easier. Because everything we've thrown at it so far, it's passed with flying colours. Yeah, mate, I couldn't agree more. We've had so much fun today, we didn't realise how late it's getting. There are plenty of great spots along the Frenchman's to set up camp, and we've picked this one. Rocket, what on earth are you doing, mate? Setting up your bed for the night. You gonna sleep on the boat rack? Absolutely, always wanted to sleep out underneath the stars, mate. You're crazy, you're crazy. All right, good use for a boat rack, I'll leave you to it. Tell you what, this is about as good as it gets to sit around the campfire with a few good mates, tell a few tall stories and have a couple of cold beers. This is what it's all about. We're camped about 100 metres from the Pasco. We actually went and checked it out last night and it's really deep and fast flowing so we're certainly going to have our work cut out for us. We'll assess it again this morning but we really need to get over the Pasco because we're going to the Starkey track and um, Princess Charlotte and stuff like that. So never been to that part of the Cape before. So really excited about that. But we need to get across the Pasco first. Wish us luck. Before we go anywhere though, we've got to sort out Andrew's winch problem. Thankfully, the problem isn't severe. A little tiny earth cable at the bottom of the winch had come off. Yes! <laughs> Got it! And pretty soon we're back in the saddle and pointing down towards the Pasco. Yeah, just sleep, boys. Yeah, good, mate. It wasn't a bad bush camp at all. Nice little view. That was an amazing little spot, that was. Nah, it actually turned out all right. Sometimes when you get things set up, get a swag rolled out and get a fire going, even a scrubby place like that can be a bit of home. I'll tell you what, we've got a bit of a mission to get down to the river, I reckon. It's um, quite, quite washed out. I'm lifting wheels already. I'm interested to see what this river looks like. I've heard some stories. Yeah, I checked it out yesterday. It was pretty dark, but um, it was fast flowing and real deep, mate. That's a couple of troubling things when it comes to river crossings, isn't it? You could say pretty much anything else and I'd be all right. Fast flowing and deep. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon there's crocodiles, mate. More than one. Oh, there you go. You just said another thing. Okay, crocodiles as well. Brilliant. Whoa. There's a big hole there on the right-hand side that I just found. Yeah, you got to pick your line through here, that's for sure. The descent down to the Pasco is a heck of a lot of fun. You've really got to concentrate on where your tyres are. It's such a technical little drive, and throttle control is absolutely everything. You want to get those tyres just right, so you miss your diffs on those big rocks, and also avoid jumping into any holes. That's the noise of the 79 flexing. Doesn't do it very often. <laughs> here we go, the Pasco River's just down here. Look at that, mate, it's nice and deep, that's for sure. Flowing quite well. Yeah, if you have a look at those leaves down in front, you can see she's moving fairly rapidly. Oh, it should be good, mate, this should be good. The mighty Pasco, one of the more notorious crossings on the whole Cape region, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, you certainly have to pick your times to get it right. Mate, this has got to be the line, I reckon. See that white mark on that rock there? Yeah, you can see where people have actually scraped yeah, yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you come around that to the left, and then, then sort of back. aim for the entrance. If you go in there, you're probably going to write your vehicle off, I reckon. She's pretty deep in there, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and aim for this rock, miss it with miss a bit it. of luck, and then shoot that way. Up that way. Easy, mate. It's All not right. my plan. Let's give it a All go. Right, I'll go first. Roger. Whoa! I don't want to roll before I get there. 
but Pasco was certainly the biggest challenge on the Frenchman's track. In fact, when you get up to Cape York, nearly everybody will be talking about the condition of the Pasco, and this year we've been told it is quite deep. And to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about this crossing. I've heard so much about it. I've heard so many horror stories relating to people who have hydraulic locked their engines or had their vehicle written off from trying to drive the Pasco. Oh, we get out of here. Holy heck. And even after you finish the Pasco, you've still got the exit to worry about. The fun is only just beginning. Straight up, this is pretty wild actually. A big rock climb on the other side of the Pasco has certainly got our work cut out for us. Just struggling for traction, got lockers on. Just want to take the right line through here. How good's that? A little bit of adventure. That's what Cape York's all about. If you go off the main sort of thoroughfares in Cape York, you find spots like this that they just test you and your four-wheel drive. Take it nice and gently. Ease the old girl down. There we go. She's getting the water's half the fun here. And Graham's technique is on point. He's eased into the Pasco, throttled down, and created a nice little bow wave in front of the D Max. Yoohoohoo! <laughs> yeah! Good throttle control, mate. Awesome job. Right up the other side we go. Try and pick a bit of a line here. Got it. Done. Now Andrew's had a bit of third vehicle bad luck on this trip. But there you go, that's the perfect drive when it comes to water crossings. Really picking the line and only applying enough throttle to get through. Oh, you've made that look easy, mate. Well done. That exit out of the Pasco is one bumpy track. <laughs> nice drive, mate. Look at Rocket ease himself down into the Pasco. That's one of the big advantages with an auto. And the other challenge he faces is once the 79 is in the Pasco, the trailer's still up on the rock, so he can't give it momentum yet. This exit out of the Pasco really is a challenge. He's got to get the heavy 79 out as well as the trailer, so he's got to get into it. Rocket's had no choice but to get right into it. And if you have a close look, that trailer actually gets airborne. And Rocket's noticed something's not quite right. Eep, I think I did a tire. Whoa, bad, bad Rocket. <laughs> Good Lord, son. That's a flat wheel. What'd you do? Coming up here. I was coming up here. You wouldn't believe it, but yeah. a, a mountain jumped out in front of me. Yeah, they do that. And uh, put it. Big hole, straight through the side top. Uh, Look at mate, that. There's nothing you can do about that. But you got lucky. But it really isn't a problem though because yep. we've got a few spares on board and before long we're back on the track. How's this landscape, mate? It's um changed quite quite vastly from um, the other side of the mountain. Yeah, it's uh from out of that rainforest you thick scrubland. It's almost like some sort of lunar landscape, look yeah. I don't know, you could almost shoot a moon documentary here. Yeah, that's Cape York for you, isn't it, mate? It just changes from rainforest to desert to, to moon landscapes. <laughs> you even get a bit of coast in there occasionally. What's the plan from here, mate? Won't be too long, mate, before we actually do hit the coast and we get down to Starkey and um, around that sort of Princess Charlotte area. Nah, it sounds like a terrible plan, mate. Let's head back to the city. I reckon that'd be the place to go. You couldn't pay me to do that, mate. I reckon we'll get down there and um, maybe even set up the swags on the beach. How does that sound? Sounds perfect, absolutely perfect. Lead the way, mate. What did I say about mateship at the start? It's been one challenge after another so far, and the mateship is what gets you through to the end. And it also makes it a hell of a lot of fun too. Well, there you go, boys. The Frenchman's done and dusted. Um, so we head down to the coast. Bring on the surf, mate. Well, isolated bays and beaches on that east coast there. Sounds great, mate. Bit of blue water be nice. Yeah, you wait till you see it, mate. It's um, it's the place where postcards come from. I'm thinking like coconut trees, white sandy beaches, blue water, and um, maybe a few fish too. Who knows? I'll tell you what, the Frenchman was the first for me, and I'll tell you what, I thoroughly enjoyed it. A couple of really, really good challenges on that track, but yeah, I wouldn't mind getting down to the coast. I'm looking forward to that very much so. Folks, one thing you're going to have to get used to up here in Cape York are corrugations. 
and they can make life downright uncomfortable. But here are a couple of tips to help smooth things out. Alrighty, tip number one, and it sort of goes without saying, but of course, we've got to talk about tyre pressures. Now, in a modern dual cab ute, such as my D-Max here, I'm going to run about 24 psi in the rear and 22 up the front. Of course, that is because I'm carrying quite a load up the back there. Now, just be sure not to go too low, because on these roads out here, you don't want to run the tyre off the bead and get stuck, and that's the last thing you want. Okay, next up, you need to experiment with your speed. Now, too slow, and it's going to be really rough, as you can imagine. Too fast, it's still going to be rough, but it's also getting unsafe. You really want to find that sweet spot in between where you're gliding across the top of the corrugations and smoothing out your ride. For me, that's generally around the 60 to 80 kilometres per hour. Finally, make sure you increase your braking distance. You see, with your suspension loading and unloading so frequently, it'll have a big impact on your braking ability. So make sure you pick your corners well before you hit them and give yourself plenty of room to slow down. Now, my D-Max right here has electronic brake force distribution, which basically means it brakes the wheels that need it most. So on all of these roads, I'm going to be well looked after. Right now we're in the Starkey River region. We're really wanting to simply take a look around as it's supposed to be pretty specky. Mate, I've just um, decided to take us down this little track uh, I found on the VMS. You can probably see it on your one too, mate. It's just this little dotted line that looks like it'll take us a bit closer to the coast. Yeah, mate, we've got the McIver River off to the left-hand side. Looks like it branches around. And if I'm not mistaken, we'll have to cross that fairly soon. Yeah, copy, mate. Um, it's obviously one of those tracks that doesn't get traveled a heck of a lot. Um, that's what I like, just sort of point, point your nose down those little tracks and seeing where they go. Hey, Rocky, got a copy back there, mate. A bumpy old track, mate. How are you going with that trailer? Any dramas? This Black Series is an absolute treat to drive, especially with its twin shot independent suspension. Couldn't ask for anything any better. Good to hear it, mate. Good to hear it, because I tell you what, anything less over this track. I reckon you'd have your work cut out for you. No, I think I've certainly picked the best camper to bring along on this trip. Things are getting quite uh, sandy, mate. Heaps of mangroves around. Mate, this is one of those super wild, untouched places that we bump into every once in a while. Yeah, exactly right, mate. It certainly pays to just follow a little dirt track every now and again, because you never know where it might end up. I was always born a beach baby, so I can tell you what, I'm more than happy to be down here, without a doubt. I think if we keep following this little beach along too, we might even pop out at a river mouth. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Hello right, boys, from memory, there's a fair bit of soft sand up here, I'm gonna give it a help. Mate, I might just let you uh, get to the top, just in case, mate, I don't wanna stop behind you. Yeah, fair enough. As with all beach runs, the entry and exit points are usually the hard part, and this one here is no different. It's long, steep, and super soft. Just creeping through, <laughs> like, just making it. This drive here is all going to be about momentum. There you go boys, I'm through, just. It's going to take quite a run up to get up there. Yeah Rocket, you hold five until we're all up mate, and then if we need to render assistance we can uh, send the cavalry in mate. That'll probably take most of yours. And maybe a helicopter. Sand driving, it's all about tyre pressure and momentum, and a balance of the two. Get enough momentum, and enough tyre pressure's right, and you'll sail through it. Get it wrong, and really it becomes a chore. Right now, I've just stuffed it a little bit, just made it through. This goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Woohoo, I'm up. That's good. I have a bad feeling about this. No, nah, you'll be right, mate. Get into it, though. We're planning on heading inland once more and making our way to a favourite place of mine called Connie Bay. Suddenly, though, Rocket's in trouble. We've got a problem. Bloody thing lost all power all of a sudden for some reason. It'd be a shame for his trip to have to end here. Yeah, I'm just checking it out. I've got a, a pretty big problem with this engine at the moment. It's just coming up the hill here. It's a long sand run, and the engine just went flat. I actually felt like the engine was actually deliberately retarding. I'm losing all my power going up the hill. No codes, engine temp, auto temp, everything's absolutely perfect. But the inner cooler is absolutely, you could roast an egg on it. It's that hot. The uh, boost sensor on the back of the inner cooler, the pipe hasn't popped. Maybe, you know where it is? Yep, I can actually see the end of the pipe. There it is. You have no idea how relieved I feel. Up in the Cape, when you have an engine problem, and Mr. Genius over here turns along and finds the problem in five seconds flat, Genius, that's nice. Toyota life, boys, eh? 79, look at you all in here, looking at that engine bay. Where am I? I'm up the top, had a cup of coffee, I'm all... <laughs> <laughs> you 
Yeah. It may well come off again, it's quite loose. Is it? Yeah, it may even have a split or something in it. But I've pushed it back on. All right, that'll do. What we're actually doing here is not getting Rocket out of a bog situation. He's not bogged at all. He's just uh, engine problems, which has been unfortunate. But he just can't quite get started. When he gets started, because of the weight, he bogs down. So these are going to just get him off the board and hopefully get him enough to get going. If not, we'll just keep putting these in front until we get him sort of on the flatter ground and he can get going. So multiple uses, the old Max Tracks. In all honesty, I wouldn't leave home without him. I, I rely on him a lot. They're a good bit of kit. Right on, mate. Max tracks really come to their own on the soft sand. Of course, they can be used in nearly any four-wheel drive terrain. In the soft sand, they just work wonders. No, it's just it's just sinking straight down. That's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, okay. Right, well, that's a bit better. I need to get up out of the sand. Now, the key is going to be to get those Max tracks under the tyres so Rocker can get up out of the soft sand and it'll put a lot less pressure on the recovery. Snatch the rest of the way, Rocket. This is just about as hard as it gets on the soft sand. Firstly, you've got really fine silica soft sand. It's easy to get bogged in. And the other thing is you're up a hill. As you can see, we're using the Max Tracks here to really try and help what's going to be a pretty difficult snatch recovery here. Um, so the idea being, we're going to try and get Rocket up out of the sort of sand onto the Max Tracks, by which stage the snatch trap will have taken up a lot of energy and hopefully they can just continue. If that doesn't work, we'll come back and we'll reset and do it all again. But uh, it's got his work cut out for him. See how they go. And Andrew's into it. Let's hope he's got enough mumbo to pull Rocket and the trailer up the hill. Under the bonnet of Andrew's 79 series is a Steinbauer module. It gives him so much extra horsepower and more importantly torque. And it's really needed for situations just like this. <laughs> yes! Keep going Andrew, keep going! <laughs> Go! <laughs> we're winning, we're winning! Good work fellas, that recovery was insane. We've got to be literally metres away from the beach, I reckon. I think we're going to pop out of this tunnel of trees and straight onto the sand, mate. I'm looking forward to it, mate. Be sure you turn before you get your wheels wet. I'm sure it won't disappoint. Having spent some time inland, we've made our way back to a stunning part of the coastline. Ah, oh, stop it. There's a little catamaran sitting out there. This is, ah, oh, this is paradise. Oh yeah, look at the colour of that water. Cop a load of this. Big cat sitting out in the water. Look how clean this sand is. It's got to be one of the cleanest beaches I've ever been on. This here is Connie Bay, and it's absolutely spectacular. This amazing stretch of coastline will be our home for the night. So it's time to get camp set up. Now, Graham and myself have a very similar camp setup that we use right around Australia, but I, but I reckon on sandy beaches like this, it really comes into its own. I reckon coastal camping has to be one of the best ways to camp out in the bush. When you mix it with scenery like this, yeah. it's pretty hard to beat. Mate, it's hard to believe that, what, half a day ago, we crossed the Pasco. Yeah, didn't you, look like this. You, no, no. <laughs> you come down on a beach like this. Look, I'm going to say it, mate, this is the best of Cape York. Yeah, 100%. We've done a lot of bush tracks, we've done some yep. really cool river crossings. We've come down to some other really deep water crossings down around here. Donkeys, yeah, real oh, deep. And well, here we are on the beach. It's really? one of those crossings today caught me up by surprise, completely by surprise. Actually went up the windscreen, I reckon I went underwater. <laughs> <laughs> went across the roof. Mate, here we are. Just, look at this. Princess yeah. Charlotte sort of bay region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starkey. Yeah. Yeah. Cape Flattery's down that way somewhere. Yep. Here we are on the beach. No, absolutely. And one of the widest sand beaches you'll see anywhere yep, this yep. side of Esperance, Western Australia. Yep, exactly Superb. right, exactly right. That's you're the gonna, thing. You're going to catch a fish? Catch a fish? Well, I might actually, I might, I was going to cook some dinner. Oh no, I seriously might just walk, if I can get myself off this chair. Yeah, motivated. Fire up the old... Weber. Maybe, yeah. Alright, yeah. done. Okay. You know, I was told about this recipe that was a sweet and sour meatball, so I'm going to make rissoles. Rissoles are fantastic and I think every Australian deserves to know how to cook rissoles. So first up, chopped a little bit of onion. That's easy, straight into the bowl. Simple as that. Put the onion in the bowl. While you're in the fridge, mate, I can see you sniffing around. Way, yeah, 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 yeah. He wants this here. Can you get the mince out? Not that, mate. Mate, two things I've noticed. What's That's that? a lot of mince you've got right there. Yep. Secondly, 4X bitter. 4X bitters, mate. I, every time I come to the top end, I always get myself bitters. I like to treat myself every now and again. Well, you're treating me as well. This is about a kilo of mince. We've got a few hungry fellas with us tonight. Wait. What? What the is that? Pineapple. You, you, 
Mate, in mate, what part put, of Australia do you put pineapple in Rissol? We're in Queensland now, Boots. So what I want to do here, are you keen for a bit of curry? Love it. <laughs> a bit of keen curry? That's, yeah, that's, that's heaps. That's, 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 here you go. This is Worcestershire sauce. What is it? Worcestershire sauce. Again, it's about a teaspoon or a tablespoon. Actually, you know, we've got a fair bit of mint, so maybe that's a, a bit more. Yeah, go, 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 go. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's a fair bit. Settle down. You know your salt, uh, barbecue's salt. on fire over here? Yeah, I, I wanted to preheat her. You really are. So I've got salt and pepper together. So what I want to do here now is make the Rissol. Have you got two tins of them? Just, you don't you, need two you tins. Ate, you, you ate. Don't get what this so, fascination a, of yours with. That's a good rissole. You just flatten them out, yeah. I think. That's how you do rissoles. Why don't you start chucking these on the on the weather? Just let them cook. What? Don't turn them until like, for ages. Okay. I just might put them straight on even. Ooh, <clears throat> Alright. Got some little carrots. Oh, they're little they're little picanitos. They they look like they're frozen, bro. They're a little bit frozen. I keep them in the freezer section. When you Traveling, I suppose, with veggies, it's really hard to keep them fresh. So I um, freeze them. Freeze them. Bit of butter. Yeah, chuck them in. I've got the carrots. I've They're never in. seen a sweet and sour sauce with carrot in it before. No. Dude, I think you need to turn those. Okay, to give them a turn. You've got to be careful with them. Yeah, it's very difficult to do. So what I've got here, I've just basically got the butter, I've got the onions, I've got the carrots. They're all sautéing. So just, just. Why do you have to put pineapple in it? How would you get the well, sweet? You put sugar. You don't need the second tin though, that's a no, lot. No, I do, I do, mate. That's, dude, that's a lot. Righto, that stock. Yep, it's got a hole in the bottom. It's got a hole in the bottom. <laughs> you can see it's it's only about a three quarter of a litre. All I want to do here is put about a bit over a cup probably. <laughs> Soy, yep, oh, about a tablespoon, a bit more maybe. Tomato sauce, mate. Dead horse? Whoa. Tomato sauce gives it a bit of base, I think. A bit of plain flavour too, mate. So it's all, all going to go in here, mate. Oh, it's, all, it's all going to get in the same hole. So That's probably, exactly right. probably about two tablespoons. That is looking. That. Have we got any heat down that thing? Is it yeah, working? Yeah, no, no, we're good, we're good. So I just want to mix that around now. That's looking all right. How long do we give that? I want to I want to basically simmer that for about 10 minutes. Okay. So 10 yep. minutes. All right. Yep. So, right, so pretty much just finish this beer off and that will thicken up nice. Put the rissoles in and we'll be ready to serve. How good's that? Nice easy one. That's starting to thicken up real nice, mate. You see the bubbles coming through? Yep. Means it's good to go. So we can okay. put the rissoles straight in there, let it simmer for 10 minutes as well. And then that all the pineapple and stuff will go straight into those rissoles. Since I've I put those rissoles in, you see that sauce is really thickened, thickened up. Thickened right up, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Leave that for another 10 minutes. Let's get that sweet and sour really into those rissoles. Yep. Get some plates, maybe crack yourself another four x or something like that. So we'll like get that. another 10 minutes or so? Yep. All right, cool. And then we'll plate up and ready to go, eh? Last one, mate. Oh, you want to wrap your laughing gear around this one? Hey, mate, don't I just. All right, all right, all right. We've got some plates. Got some plates, yeah. here you go. Rocket likes pineapple. He does. I love pineapple. Yeah. What's the ratio here, two rissoles each? Roughly. Roughly, yep. Yep. A bit of, a bit of that gear on there. It should taste like sweet and sour rissoles. Have you ever had sweet and sour rissoles before? There you go. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> we'll eat a hearty meal if you want to get into some of the trash tomorrow, mate, because I reckon there's water crossings, there's big sand dunes. I hope so. I hope so. And here's the thing. <laughs> Pineapple works well. It does. It's not bad. It really it? does. Every now and again, mate. All right, what do you say? We go in the fire and enjoy this one. Yeah. Crack a cold beer. I'm going to have to And beer, um, yeah. just listen to the sound of the waves crashing on the beach. Stop making it sound romantic. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird, dude. <laughs> waking up in places like this that make you glad to be alive. The idea of busy cities, traffic jams and so much stress is so far from our minds right now. How good is this? Mate? Looking good mate, smelling Coffee. good too. Coffee is on. What's the plan for today bud? Well I reckon we um, pack up camp yep. and maybe head down, there's a massive beach run, like 35 kilometres. It's, it's a really remote beach. Then maybe head up into the dunes for some of that really soft sand and even some of those really deep water closets. And then if we get all through that, yep. we can get maybe to the headlands and oh, yeah, yeah. go for a fish. Find another know. beach like this yeah. to camp on. How yeah, good is this? That smells good, mate. Perfect, mate. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. All right, well, let's, uh... oi! He's, he's, he's loving camper life, isn't he, mate? <laughs> <laughs> right, it's in there sound asleep. Oh, he won't be asleep for a minute, but... All right, mate, we'll, um, we'll pack up, hit the tracks. What do you reckon? Having packed up camp and headed inland, we're going to explore Cape Flattery and the Silica Sand Dunes. This whole area is full of water crossings in the form of swamps and they can be really deep. I'm not a fortune teller, but today I can guarantee it's going to be very exciting. These water holes, they're just full of this organic matter. It's almost like, I guess the best way I can describe it, it's like peat, sort of blackish coloured soil. And when you get through it, 
uh, even the first vehicle through, or the water's black. Um, I see it very similar in Southwest WA where you get that tea tree or tannins that stay in the water. Could be similar up here, but I believe it's a leaching process through the earth with all that sort of humic material underneath, and that's what causes all these puddles to be a dark colour. Um, been here once before, and an old bloke told me when I came out, there's actually crocs in some of these, so, oh man, that puts the wind up. You've got to be real careful. Wish me luck, boys. See you later. Good we know it. The water crossings you get around the Cape Flattery region are quite unique. I've never seen them anywhere else in Australia. You've got a really swampy looking water, but underneath you've got really, really white silica sand. Sometimes you'll be driving right along and you can hit a soft bit of sand. And that's exactly what happened to Andrew in this case. Generally, these water crossings have quite a firm base, but you can never be too sure. I think the leaf springs at the rear and the smaller clearance than us have made him go down and get hung up. But he's done the right thing. As soon as he's got stuck, he hasn't tried to power on, so he hasn't dug himself any deeper. This should be an easy recovery. This is the best way to get someone out of a bog nice and quick so their four-wheel drive doesn't fill up full of water. And it's worked a treat. That came out of there easier than I thought. This little guy was walking on the sand. I've obviously flicked him out when I was coming through that bog hole. Good to know there's crayfish in there. Oh, oh he nearly bit me. <laughs> good to know there's crayfish in there. Why didn't put the pots in a bit later? How good's this? Now Rocket's up with a trailer. Let me give you one hot tip. I don't reckon he's going to hang around for long. And that's the key to a water crossing like this. Jump on the throttle and hold that throttle down so you carry that momentum right through the crossing. Well done, Rocket. You made it look easy, bud. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> oh, that's so good. The base is nice and firm, so it's not too bad, but holy heck, it was deep. I just got washed. Oh yeah, shivers! These little swamps seem to stay here all year round. Of course, they get a bit deeper when the wet season comes through. I nearly forgot to put my window up! We're tackling these water crossings in July. Now, a lot of the runoff from the wet season has already disappeared, but the water crossings are still quite deep, so a lot of care is needed. In my opinion, this is about as fun as four-wheel driving gets. Whoa, big wave, big wave. <laughs> <laughs> that was impressive. I loved it. I first came into this Cape Flattery area down here in 2006 and it was on my way up to Cape like everybody else, first time to go up to the Cape and I was in such a rush to get up and do that tally track. I called in here on the way up, camped down at Allen Beach and explored this whole area and back then I absolutely loved it. This is my third time back now and I rate the Cape Flattery area my favourite place on the Cape, bar none. In fact, it's quite high up the list of favourites and everything else falls down below it. Little gems like this keep me coming back time after time. <laughs> soft. That sand is really soft, fellas. Bit of a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, the only thing is, sand's my Achilles heel. Oh, look at that water. It's amazing. Oh, I didn't notice a thing. <laughs> it's going to be one of the most magnificent sights you could ever see, isn't it? Never tire of coming off sand dunes onto a beach. Oh, look at you go, you crab. Look at this beach, will you? Paradise. Ah, oh, this is amazing. I'm gonna go up that coconut tree and get a coconut. How good's that? Get a load of them. Heaps of coconuts on each one of them too. This is an epic beach run. It goes for about 35 kilometres, and on it you're going to find all sorts of floats and jetsam washed up on the beach. It really is a rugged bit of coastline that I don't think too many people get to explore. Mate, I ain't going to put it out there. Could this possibly be the best beach run in Australia? Oh, it's definitely up there, mate. There's just so many good ones in Queensland. Um, it's right up there. Yeah, you're right. I don't think it's the best, but it's certainly, to be in the top five, you'd have to agree. Tell you what, this is absolutely a beachcomber's delight here, isn't it? I'm keeping my eye out for a, uh, a washed up yacht that I can re salvage. Yeah, I was looking for a little catamaran, that's what I would like. We're just driving along and I spotted, actually, you can see the tyre tracks right here. 
this freshwater spring bubbling up from obviously out of the sand dunes, and this is where it's surfacing. I've never seen anything like it. That hole right there, if I was to jump in that, I'd disappear. I'll give you a bit of an idea. I'm not gonna get in it, but you put your leg in that, and it's just a bottomless hole. Like, this just goes straight down. If you go over here, stand in these, you just sink straight away. <laughs> and you keep going down. Oh, unbelievable. It's just pure, fresh spring water. I'm out, I'm out. Oh, that's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. Where the bubbles are. Step in the bubbles. Mother Nature is just amazing. <laughs> that is definitely something to avoid driving into. Hey, Sean, I reckon we, uh, I reckon we had a left up here somewhere on the track, mate. Yeah, mate, it's been an epic beach run. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. He's gonna keep an eye out for that track, mate, on the left. Yeah, BMS says it's coming up in a 100 to 200 metres or so. Biggest issue we're gonna have, I think, is height, mate. Vehicle height. Yeah, exactly right, mate. Um, I'm gonna be thinking very low thoughts. <laughs> yes, and then we'll try and get you through. As we push further north, we're nearing the Cape Flattery mining facility, which means we've got to turn inland and take on a very unique challenge. I've just missed the turn off, I believe. I think it's just the back there. Checking out the big mine up there, the, the big uh, bloody loader. All right, everybody think low thoughts. Yeah, much better, this is the track. This here is a tunnel that's been constructed underneath the conveyor belt that shifts the silica out to the huge ships. However, it's very, very narrow. Oh, it's gonna be nice and tight, mate. Um, it's just hard to line yourself up. The funny thing is, that tunnel gets remarkably small the closer you get to it. Um, just have a look at my roof, mate. Well, you're not there yet, but you've got plenty of room from what I can see, but you're not there yet. Like, I could, I'd comfortably sit on your roof rack at this point. Not so much width, though. Yeah, you got mobs of room. Keep going, keep it going, go on. Get up there. Go, 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 drive. Oh, this is so tight, I'm just, I'm having a good old time just trying to keep it straight, and um, oh, my aerial's hitting the roof, that's for sure. <laughs> you're, you're really packed, like you wouldn't want to put another opera house trap on the roof, you'd be stuffed. If you just look carefully at these walls, you can see heaps of scrape marks for other people. You can't steer it so straight. He's really tight in there. He'd like a sardine. There's um, quite a few wasps in here. I'll just put my window up. Um, I'd suggest everyone puts their windows up. I'm putting my window up now. Goodbye, Rocket. <laughs> Those wasps are going to be very angry too. There's a fair view flying around. Well, I've just about made it through, but it leaves me wondering how the others are going to go. I popped out the other side, mate. Feeling a bit fresh too. I reckon you'd be able to fit in there, mate, and um, do a swerve test while you're in there. I'm going in, boys. Okay, Graham's up in the D-Max. All right, gee whiz. The closer you get to this thing, the more narrow it becomes. The other hard thing is that you, you're going from a light environment to a dark environment, which is rather weird. <laughs> Come on! Too easy! Mate, I could, I could hold a dance in here either side. Oh my goodness, there's so many wasps in here. If you're allergic to wasps, this is like a tunnel of death. I'm allergic to wasps. He's through with plenty of room. Yeah, that was, I could have held a dance in there. Good now we got, oh, there's a lot of prickles here. Oh, <laughs> sugar. Oh, those big barbed ones. You gotta get a pair of flies to get them out. Oh. Oops, I'll turn oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, you got a prickle in. Oh, yeah. Andrew's turn now. The big challenge about driving through the tunnel is the fact you've got to push your mirrors in. That means you can't see how close you are to hitting the wall. This is where your mates come in, using the UHF to communicate so they can be your eyes and ears and you just steer the steering wheel. Uh, just really slowly, hang on a second Andrew, just be really, don't be jumpy, your rooftop tent is actually touching on the roof, ever so slightly. Whoa, okay, can you keep an eye out for me? Yeah, no worries. Andrew's right on the limit, his vehicle's so tall with the rooftop tent that it's literally touching and scraping the top of the tunnel. Yeah, you're touching on it again. Oh, actually, just hang on there for a sec mate. It's almost as if he needs a spare 100 kilos on the back. That's where Rocket jumps in. Well done, mate.
now it's Rocket's turn. He's got the biggest rig out of the whole convoy. This is going to be one serious challenge. Good so far. Here up. Keep going, keep going. Oh, you got a couple of inches. Am I? Yeah, height wise. I might just stand on the trailer, maybe shorter off, mate. Well. This is very tight in this tunnel. Get a good nut out of the exhaust though. I think I've got Andrew and Sean standing on the drawbar of the trailer to bring me through. Woohoo! <laughs> wow, that was seriously close. And what an awesome challenge. I'm through! You're a beauty! Thank you guys! Having made it through the tunnel, we can push onto another headland and meet the coast once again. I have a look at this boys. I'll never get tired of seeing the coast. Now, nah, especially these tropical coasts when you're in the lee of the wind like this, that's just mag bloody nificent. Oh, sensational, mate. There's a track that follows this little headland right around. You ever been this far up, Sean? Yeah, mate, yep. Well, I haven't, so this is all new to me. It's here we're going to push as far along as we can until we meet the end of the track and the end of our adventure. Looks like um, it's just about as far as we can get the vehicles up here. Um, just around this next little rocky outcrop, I might um, park up and maybe even grab a fishing rod and go for a bit of a walk. Yeah, that sounds perfect, mate. <laughs> I'm in for that. Well, boys, park up and grab your rods. Here we are. This is it. We've reached the end of the road, or track, should I say. And there's only one thing left to do, and that's wet a line, of course. I reckon we just got to wait for that tide to come in a bit more, and we'll be laugh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely laughing. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Folks, from the Frenchman's, which is, oh, it's almost rainforest speak, isn't it? it is, up mate. there in the hills, all the way through down here. Cape Flattery, it's going to be one of my favourite places on the Cape. Look at it, it's, it's absolutely sensational. It's amazing. And How many you know, people the, are here? The crowds are absolutely <laughs> I was wild. Going to say, <laughs> the crowds it's, are wild. It's crazy, we've got that entire beach to ourselves. Yep. We're going to spend what, a couple of days down here? We nearly have a person at each, each campsite, campsite and yep. um, still have campsites. The way Rocket's been snoring, we might have to do that, mate. <laughs> Folks, look, in your rush to zoom up and see the tip, which I really recommend you do, it's a fantastic part of the world, you've got to stop and check out Cape Flattery. It's a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. We'll probably stay here, you'll probably find us here. I reckon I will wait at least till the beer runs out. Campsite number six, just up the road there. Yep. We might catch you down here at Cape Flattery, we might not, definitely catch you next time. But we'll drive action now, we haven't got many stakes mate, so you really have to live up to your Alright mate, we'll stand back. Alright, come on, stand Put back. Get back into it. What? Can we get some professionalism? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what did we fell in on the glass? <laughs> Hody hody hum de hum. <laughs> oh, I would have loved it! I would have loved that so much! Quite neat there. <laughs> oh, that would have been the best day of my life. Oh. Cabernet be good. Oh, it's early in the day. I'd probably go white. Alright, the plan here, mate, is I'm gonna go forward and get stuck in the mud. <laughs> now that's pretty hard, Nick. Whoa. Getting down there. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Whoops. That is a slippery place to be. I'd put money on it, I said you would have rolled, caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he says that now. Well, mate, I didn't say your name with oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you lead it, I will I will follow you there to the camping sites. I like full driving and camping. So does I. I like it as was you does too. Feel the burn, baby. Oh, this is going quick, young. Hi, Sean. Yeah. Again, that's a little bit more finesse. Rise! 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 Yes! It's a boy! <laughs> <laughs> right over there, mate. You've got to be close. Yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's doing it, I'